All right, I'm going to preach. As Pastor Bert said, for those of you who don't know, um, my name is Jadira Ulig, and I am the pastor of children's ministry here. And it is an honor and a privilege to be asked to minister at this pulpit. Hey, Miss Helena. Love you, sweetie. Um, it really is an honor and a privilege, and I thank Pastor Don and Sister Marva for this honor and privilege to be able to do this. I do not take it lightly. And um, I pray that you will be blessed tonight. And so so I'd like to just open up with prayer and then we'll go into the word. Father, thank you so much for who you are and what you have done. Father, I thank you so much and we thank you for this day. Lord, I, I say that again and again and again because it is an amazing day that we are in. And we thank you so much for allowing us to be a part of this day. Father, thank you for what you are doing, for what you are saying, for how you are moving. Father, thank you, thank you for allowing us to be a part of this end time work here on the earth. Father, Father, we thank you. We love you. And Father, I just give this over to you. Lord, I pray that only your words would be spoken. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, good evening, everyone. Um, I, I've been hearing over and over again something in my spirit. And the Lord gave me an illustration, and I want to share that with you tonight and speak on that. And so the title of my message is... <sighs> My sheep hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice. And um, one day, a couple of weeks ago, we were in staff prayer, as Pastor Burt mentions, and many people mention. We pray as a staff every morning, Monday through Thursday, and um, we pray for your needs. And during that time, the Lord also speaks to us, and he just shows us different things. And the Lord gave me this illustration. When I was growing up, my dad would carry his keys on a loop, on his belt loop. He'd click them on a little belt loop, and he had a little hook, and he carried his keys. How many of you men know what I'm talking about? All right, wonderful. Uh, <laughs> I thought it was pretty practical. It, seemed, it makes sense. It's not in your pocket. Well, my dad, whenever we would go to the stores, my dad would capture my brother's attention and mine by jingling his keys. He never said a word. He never called out. This was before cell phones. And it didn't matter where we were in the store, wherever we were in the place, I knew my dad was calling me. And many men had the same key ring, but I knew when my dad was calling me. It didn't matter if there were a bunch of men around and all of them were walking and it was making noise. My dad would move his keys a certain way and I knew my dad was calling me. And my brother and I, we would drop whatever we were doing, which was usually reading a book in the book section, because that's what we did in the stores. Uh, we weren't in the toys, we were in the books. But we would drop it and we'd just like, go around looking for my dad. My dad never said a word and we'd find him and we'd leave. And the Lord showed me that my sheep hear my voice. Amen. It's as subtle as that. There's just a little difference, a slight difference. Sometimes the Lord does speak to us very loudly. I mean, it's a booming voice. I still remember the first time that I audibly heard the Lord. You never want to hear this as the first time you audibly hear the Lord. You have disobeyed. That's what I heard very loudly. Very sad to hear. Very first thing I hear audibly from the Lord. But in all other instances, most instances, it is not the booming voice. It's a subtlety. And my sheep hear my voice. My sheep know my voice. As we grow in the Lord, he starts to get softer and it starts to be just a move, just a slight touch this way, that way. But I fear that in the end times, we're not hearing him. 
I'm going to start off in 1 Samuel chapter 3. And this is when Samuel, we talk about Samuel's first prophecy. And Samuel has been serving the Lord. He's serving Eli. He's in the temple. And um, I'm going to start off in verse 1. Now the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no widespread revelation. And it came to pass at that time while Eli was lying down in his place. And when his eyes had begun to grow so dim that he could not see and before the lamp of God went out in the tabernacle of the Lord where the ark of God was and while Samuel was lying down that the Lord called Samuel and he answered here I am sometimes we stop there here I am but then it says verse 5 so he ran to Eli And said, here I am, for you called me. And he said, I did not call. Lie down again. And he went and lay down. Then the Lord called yet again, Samuel. So Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. He answered, I did not call, my son. Lie down again. The Lord was calling Samuel, and he thought it was Eli. How often do we hear something from the Lord, but we attribute it to something else? No, that wasn't the voice of the Lord. That was something else. No, that can't be. That was something else. And Samuel was very well-intentioned. He was trying to go toward Eli and say, I'm here. Here I am. Like, let me do your bidding. What is it that you want of me? But it wasn't Eli that was calling him. Sometimes we're so distracted that we're thinking it's one thing when it's not. Sometimes we hear the voice of the Lord in someone, but we say it can't be the voice of the Lord. Because it doesn't come in the package that we think. Or we think, that person's talking to me, not the Lord. Now Samuel, verse 7, now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, nor was the word of the Lord yet revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. So he arose and went to Eli and said, here I am, for you did call me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord had called the boy. Therefore, Eli said to Samuel, go lie down and it shall be if he calls you that you must say, speak, Lord, for your servant hears. Do we have the ears to hear? Do we have the ears to hear? The Lord is speaking. Pastor's been talking about it. He's been preaching. He's been saying the Lord's been speaking from the beginning of the service to the end of the service and even throughout all the rest of our week. The Lord is speaking and he is moving and he is doing things. My sheep hear my voice. We need to trust that. We need to know that we do hear the voice of the Lord. Pastor has said time and time again, and he's been saying it with, like with greater urgency. You hear the Lord. Don't doubt the Spirit speaking to you. Do not doubt the Lord speaking to you. We are being called to do things that have never been done before. In ways that have never been done before. We need to trust the voice of the Lord. And we need to know that the Lord speaks through all sorts of vessels. We know, and I've said it before, if the Lord spoke, if God spoke through a rooster, I think he can speak through any one of us. He can speak through our children. He can speak at any moment 
in any way that he desires. We have to have the ears to hear. And I'm not talking about physical ears. Sometimes we stop right there and we think, oh, it's our physical ears. Oh, my goodness, I need to get an ear cleaning, you know. Oh, I can't hear. No, I'm, that's not what Scripture's talking about. That's not what the Lord's talking about. He's talking about your heart. Do we have the heart to receive? Do we have an ear to hear what the Lord is saying in the spirit? My sheep hear my voice. We need to trust that we hear the voice of the Lord. And we need to trust the voice of the Lord. Sometimes we think, I heard it, but I don't understand it, so I'm not going to do it. I don't know what to do because I don't understand. I don't have to understand how a car works to use it. I wish I knew. I'd like to know the intricacies of an engine and, you know, internal combustion engines and all that. That sounds so fancy, right? I have no idea what that means. But um, it's an engine, right? So I would love to know how an engine works. I would love to put together a transmission. It sounds so cool. But I don't need to know how to put together a transmission to use the car to get to work. So if God tells me to do something, I don't need to understand it to do it. I just need to move in it. He said, go, you go. He said, stop, you stop. He said, speak, you speak. He says, be quiet, be quiet. It's, it's not something God, God is amazing. He makes it so simple. He simply says, believe, obey he doesn't make it complex he doesn't say here's as Stan has told us about step one step two step three step four you know no it is not like that my sheep hear my voice we hear his voice we know we know that we know that we know is there anything raise your hand if you have ever known something that you know that you know that you know without even knowing how you know You know that you know, and you wonder, how do I know that? Have you ever opened your mouth and said something? Said something that the Lord is saying, and you said, where did that come from? I was just telling someone in the office, I was telling, oh, Michael, I guess he's not there. Uh, Michael Rami. He, he was talking about altar calls, and I said, actually, the very first altar call that I ever did, I bombed it. Guys, when I say bombed it, I mean like it was bad. It was so bad. And it happened as a result of pastor telling me to do something. The children had just done a resurrection program, and I was children's church director. And after the program, I, I don't even remember that program, but pastor was about to give me the microphone and as some of you know whenever we finish a program pastor normally gives the microphone you say thank you you know okay hey thank you right and we have pleasantries thank you so much for supporting us right and so I was ready and I'm standing and I was standing I think it was over here and um pastor Don puts the mic aside And he looks at me and he says, say what the Lord has given you to say. (laughs) I'm sorry, but I I was prepared to say thank you. (laughs) And he starts talking and I'm standing there and I trust my shepherd, Pastor Don, the shepherd of this house. And And I'm standing there, I was like, I have no clue what he's talking about. Like none whatsoever. And he's talking to you guys. He's talking to the congregation. And I'm standing there like, what did he just say? And he looks at me and he puts the microphone behind him. And he looks me in the eye again. Guys, Pastor Don looked at me and said, say what the Lord has given you to say. And and then he said, okay, I guess he said something along the lines of now she's going to say something. I don't know. And he hands me the microphone. And to this day, I have no idea what I said. I have no idea what I said. But I trusted the voice of the Lord in him. 
And I followed that. I said, okay. So all I did was literally open my mouth. And I don't know what I said. But I do know that in obedience, the Lord moves in our obedience. We hear his voice. And we must obey what he is telling us to do, even if it seems the craziest thing we can think of. Amen. That day, I in that moment, I don't know if it was two minutes, I don't know if it was ten minutes, I don't know how long I spoke. All I know is that after I finished speaking, I'm, it, you kind of like are in a daze, you know, you're, you're doing something the Lord's telling you to do, and you, you're just like, what just happened, right? And pastor looks at me and says, do an altar call. And I'm like, you haven't preached. The offering hasn't even been picked up. Like, this makes no sense. Usually you do an altar call at the end, you know. And I'm just like, like, what? And I came out from that. And Michael will tell you, he said he saw it. He saw when I started to walk in myself. In the thing that seemed impossible. I'm looking at it and it seemed obscure. I am not prepared for this. I am not equipped for this. I haven't gone to seminary. I don't have a title. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And I, I stepped in myself and it went all wrong. Like it went wrong. We have to walk in the spirit. We have to trust the voice of the Lord, even if it seems insane. Even if it seems crazy. We are not living in times like before. The winds have changed. We're not going back. And we must be aware of the voice of God. We need to know the voice of the Lord. When the shepherd speaks, the sheep must follow. When the shepherd moves, we must move. We can't stay where we have been in our comfort zone. We have to step out of that. My sheep hear my voice. You hear the voice of the Lord. And you must know that. Pastor was preaching in, um, in Kingsville. Or he was, uh, I don't know if it was sun, uh, Saturday or if it was a Thursday. But he said something that blew my mind, right? I've been seeing and sensing the spiritual as being more real than the physical that I see here. And I know that some of you are seeing that. I know that some of you are sensing that. That's the day that we're in. And we have to submit to that. We have to say, okay, Lord, I'm going to go into these really deep waters. But I know that I, if I stay focused on you, you're going to guide me through them. He is going to guide us through. Pastor said, spiritual living is the real world. Come on. Spiritual living is the real world. Not the thing that we see right here, but spiritual living. That grumbling that you hear in the spirit when you're laying down at night and you're wondering, what is that rolling sound? What is that booming sound? What is that that thing that I feel in the air, that's spiritual living, which is the real world. We have to operate in that realm. We are not operating in this realm. Yes, we are the hands and feet of Jesus. Yes, we are to do what he tells us to do. But we must realize that we are seated in heavenly places. We're not just right here and waiting for the eternal to come later. No, we are currently seated in heavenly places. We are operating outside of time. We exist 
outside of time. This is phenomenal, like mind blowing. Pastor always say, he's been saying, I need to find a new phrase. I don't think there is another phrase except for something in like a heavenly language. But this is mind blowing because really to have the mind of Christ, no earthly mind can hack it. We have to be completely new creations in order to be able to handle living in this spiritual realm. We have to trust the voice of the Lord, his leading. In John uh, chapter 10, verses 2 through 6, Jesus is speaking. And I, okay, so like, I didn't realize that there was such a thing as red letter until I came to this church. Whenever people said red letter, I was like, what is red letter? And I didn't realize that red letter is that, you know, the words that are in red, Jesus spoke them. And so this is red letter. Jesus was speaking, right? And so he says, but he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him, the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. You have been called by name. You have been called by name. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them. You see, Christ has already gone before you. What he asks of you, he's already done. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He's gone before you. There is nothing. There is no place where you step where he hasn't already stepped. And the sheep follow him for they know his voice. Do you know his voice? I want to hear you say, yes, I know his voice. Do you know his voice? Yes, Yes, we know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him. Flee from the stranger. Know the voice of the Lord. You know the voice of the Lord. Do not be turned astray by a stranger's voice. You know the voice of the Lord, but will flee from him for they do not know the voice of strangers. This is the sad part for me. Verse six, Jesus used this illustration, but they did not understand the things which he spoke to them. Let's go to Proverbs. So this was New Testament. We're going to Old Testament. Sometimes we think that way. In the New Testament, this is better. They did not understand the things which he spoke to them. Okay, Proverbs chapter 23, verse 12. Apply your heart to instruction and your ears to words of knowledge. See, God was always telling us to have ears to hear, a heart to receive, to understand. Proverbs chapter 2, verses 1 through 6. My son, and that means daughters as well. All right? My son, daughter, you too, because you are a son. If you receive my words, have you received his words? Do you receive his words? If you receive my words and treasure my commands within you so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding, yes, if you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding, if you seek her as silver and search for her as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God for the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understanding let's have the heart to receive the ear to hear let's have that if we go back to John chapter 10 Verses 14 through 16. Jesus goes on and he's still talking about the same thing. They didn't understand, but he kept going. I am the good shepherd and I know my sheep and am known by my own. We know the Lord. 
he knows us. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring. And they will hear my voice. And there will be one flock and one shepherd. We are one. As the Father, the Spirit, and the Son are one. We are one with him. We know the voice of our shepherd. We know the voice of God. We must recognize that we do know the voice of God. When we pray, um, sometimes, I, I, no, not sometimes, every time, I am blown away by the prayers of the saints. And um, one day, Nathan was praying, and he prayed something that has stuck with me, like, for months now. And he said, this is, this is what he prayed. He prayed, real simple, that we be driven by the Spirit of the living God. Amen. That we be driven by the Spirit of the living God. That we be animated. I've understood. That we be animated. That we be moved. That in everything, it would be led by the spirit of the living God. The spirit that lives within me. The one who gave his life for me. That spirit is alive in me. And I am found in him and he is found in me. And when he says move, I move. I am driven by the spirit of the living God. Not that I try to drive the spirit of the living God, but that I be driven by the spirit of the living God. That there would be drive in me that's not even mine. It is not my drive that moves me. I do not animate myself. The spirit of the living God animates me. And when he speaks, I know his voice. My sheep hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice. It is as subtle as my dad's keys jingling in a mass of keys. Right now, all of you men could jingle your keys. And if my dad came in and I closed my eyes, I know where my dad was. That's subtle. We will not be moved by other voices. We will not be moved by other voices. Luke chapter 6, verses 47 through 48. We know this. We know this. Whoever comes to me and hears my sayings and does them, I will show you whom he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently against that house and could not shake it for it was founded on the rock. We will not be moved by other voices. I know that the enemy comes in and he tries to beat you. But I, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, I know that my God said that he stands firm and that he will not be moved. And you will not be moved. We will not be moved because God is faithful. What he says is true. And I hear his voice. I hear his move. I know, and I know that you know, you need to trust this. When, when things get tough, you are founded on the rock. You keep saying that. You keep, you keep telling yourself that because
Because trust me, it's not you saying it to you. It's the spirit of the living God saying it to you. It is the spirit of the living God saying it to you. Now, I thank you guys so much. And I want you to know that I know it is sometimes not easy to stand. Sometimes you're thinking, I can't stand. Well, get on your knees. It's the best way to stand. Be in a place of receiving from the Lord. He is speaking to you every single second. He is speaking to you. He's not speaking to you just when these doors open and when we have service. He is speaking to you every second of every day. While you sleep, while you go about your day, he's speaking. Have ears to hear. Receive from him. Thank you so much. May the Lord bless you.